what I've seen in, in chat GPT and other AI tools is that as a patent attorney, it can really help us with our writing, can speed things along, and it can really make our writing sound better, uh, which if I'm the only one on the call today who, who needs help with their writing, uh, then so be it. But I, I have a suspicion that all of us can improve our writing in one way or another to make it more clear, uh, to organize it better, uh, to make it more grammatically correct. You know, who wants to sit around and 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 figure that out? So it's a long way of saying that patent attorneys have unique opportunities to benefit from AI, and specifically in the context of writing, because uh, we're not known as the best writers in the world. Okay, so here is three topics that you'll see come up uh, over and over again throughout the course of this presentation. You know, one is the idea of what are the opportunities of using artificial intelligence? And, and that's kind of the fun part. You know, how is this really going to improve our lives? Um, how, how is AI going to cut back on tasks that we don't want to do or that we're bored of doing? Uh, you know, does, free up time for the more fun things that we enjoy doing in the practice of law. And then second and part and parcel with that are the ethical and legal challenges of using AI. Uh, the, the court in New York is a great example of we can't just, you know, chat GPT something and then turn around and expect that to be the magic wand that we wave in the face of our opponents. There are a lot of checks that we have to make as attorney. The buck stops with us. We need to confirm that. Um, and the, the, the judges who have issued orders, I think they're doing so in good faith because they think this is getting a little carried away. Uh, maybe it is, but th there are ethical and legal challenges to the use of AI that we have to be mindful of. And you know, I'll, I'll bring that up in every context in which I bring up the opportunities of using AI, I bring up the, the challenges and ethical and legal and, and cost challenges, frankly, of using AI because some of these tools are not free. And then third, I'll talk about how to effectively prompt AI tools to avoid the sort of garbage in, garbage out scenario. What I mean by that is, in, especially with uh, Google Bard or ChatGPT or those language models, you know, a lot of people, it's an art to learn how to prompt those tools and what to write into those tools in order for them to spit out the right thing. Uh, it's not necessarily that we want to add more detail. More detail isn't always the best. Uh, these tools can get bogged down with too much detail, uh, but we do need to provide good prompts so that the chat GPTs and Google Bards of the world can provide us with good analysis and good outputs that we can then uh, check and then confirm and then add to whatever legal document that we are doing. And as a Quick aside, a lot of the tools I will be talking about today will simply be ChatGPT. The same principles would apply to Google Bard or any of the other large language models. Uh, but in, in, instead of trying to teach 15,000 different AI tools and have uh, the, the viewers here walk away with no insight into any of them, I figured I'd, I'd focus on what is probably the most popular tool that people are using today. And then hopefully you guys can gain a little bit of insight with that. 